They've been close to four years. Facts only made his debut, and since then, it has critiqued a lot of things in the Nigerian music industry and also moved a lot of conversation forward. Now, before we do the general roundup, a sound off on the current happenings in the industry. Skepta, one of the biggest rappers ever in the, in the world right now, is you know coming back home and is discovering his roots and branching out to local talents and local arts. What do you think about this? I think it's just the exposure of Nigerian music right now. You know, you know, venturing into the global scene. Everybody seeing how well our artists are doing. Everybody is seeing the numbers. Everybody is seeing, you know, the, the just the general passion around Nigerian artists in the global scene. So the Yemi Alades, the Davidos, the Whiskeys, they're really doing well. You see people like Adekunle Gold and you know uh, Faust, you know, shutting down shows in the UK. You know, appealing to African audiences. It's amazing. And people recognize this, the Drakes have recognized this, the Rihannas and the Nicki Minaj who have all collaborated with local, I mean our artists here, they've all recognized this. It's a no-brainer for someone like Skepta who has Nigerian roots, right, who's, who's managed by a Nigerian yeah. to actually make his way down here to appeal to, you know, his fan base here. Because he does have a fan base here, the homecoming concert was amazing, right, people turned out for Skepta and of course a host of other Nigerian artists. But you can see the passion when he gets on stage. People really do rock with him, and he knows this. And it's just a smart move to come back here to feel, you know, the passion of the people in Nigeria. Okay, you mentioned the homecoming concert, and the lineup for that particular show featured very promising and upcoming young Nigerians that are not particularly mainstream, but they've carved a niche for themselves. You can call it a great movement. What are your thoughts about the likes of Odusi, Wavy the Creator, Santi, etc? Yeah. I mean, man, that's the next wave, you know, we keep calling, we call them the alter, alter, alter you know, the alter movement. And uh, those guys are a crop of kids who, you know, have been able to make a mark, right? Or at least, you know, make a, 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 a some sort of, you know, effort in getting their music out. You know, thanks to platforms like SoundCloud, where they have like a call following, but people really do like them. I've been to some of their shows and offline, people have come out to support them, you know, so that's a growing movement and, you know, it shows a lot of promise. There's a lot of work to be done, you know, but it shows promise and, and that's the most important thing, that there is potential. Nigerian music, like you said, is still hot. We all thought it would pass out, but it seems it's still hot. Yeah. What do you think is the, what is the future for us? Because it seems the Western world is still very, very hungry for the Nigerian music. How can we capitalize off that well to benefit us right here? We need to make money. We need to sort out the finances. Right? We're making a lot of music, we're making good music, there's a lot of buzz around it. Are your Nigerian artists making money? And guess what, it's not just the artists, are the producers making money? Are the songwriters making money? Are the a rs making money? Are the managers making money? Are the show promoters making money? We need to help the ecosystem. Because when we do help the ecosystem, everybody benefits off it. Right now, a lot of artists are making money, but the other guys I just called, I don't think they're making that much. So we need to sort the infrastructure and then the structure out in the Nigerian music scene. That is the main thing we need to do. And we need to get experts to do this. We need to train a lot of people in the industry here. And we need people who are already trained to come in, embed themselves in this Nigerian ecosystem and sort it out. We also need the help of the government. Because when you set up the laws, your IP laws, when they are followed, right? The copyright laws, when they are followed, right? The split sheets. Do we have a recording association? We have a collecting rights association. Do we have a record? Do you understand? We need all these bodies to be formed and we need to make sure the law is followed. Once all that is sorted, everybody eats. It's a viable economy. And then we can continue to grow. What is happening now is a lot of buzz and a, a few people making money. What is going to happen in the next few years? Those who haven't made money leave the industry. They go to the banking sector, they don't have money to pursue their careers. They were looking for another set of people to begin to push it. And that is what has been happening in the industry since 2000 and, or since, since 2004, since the band and Don Jazzy came back and Two-Face popped off with the solo album. So we need to make sure everybody's eating. And it means that we need to sort out home first before we move out. Uh, let's talk about finances and money. Last month, Runtown, Kizdanem left the labels in not exactly good terms. Are you still surprised that this is happening in the Nigerian music industry? I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because artists still don't read their contracts. Right? I mean, and I'm speaking generally, I'm not speaking in the case of Kiss Daniel and Runtown. I could talk about that in a few. But people still don't respect. People don't read. Artists don't read their contracts. Artists are hungry, bro. 
If I dangle a church in front of an artist, they cool maybe 10 million and say, hey, I'm going to start off your career with 10 million. Here's this document. They, they sign this thing. I've met people who have signed documents that they don't know what was in there. Then they bring it to me to say, ah, Baba, I've signed it. Oh, look at what is here. But they've already signed it. So in the case of Kiss Daniel, a contract is a contract. If you want to renegotiate your contract, that's fine. But if you sign something, it's the law. You have to follow up with it. Right, and I guess they're kind of bad together. They have a JV deal or something. Yeah. yeah. In the case of Runtown, Runtown's contract is is, is I mean, is up. allegedly is yeah. up or is about to be up, and he wants to leave, and there's friction between them. But I'm not surprised this is happening because all the things I've been saying, in fact, only or what everybody <laughs> has been saying is that we need to educate people. People need to be enlightened, and if you don't enlighten people, we are going to have this problem over and over again. Okay. Let's move to sound right now. Last year, 2017, was more of the Ghanaian sound. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 2018, it seems a Nigerian pop artist, even some rappers. It's the Shaku Shaku. They've all gone to it's South Africa, Shaku Shaku. taking the sound, and now using Shaku Shaku. Yeah. What do you think about Shaku Shaku? Do you think it's something that's going to last, or it's just a passing It's just trend? another wave. It's just another wave like Galala was, like Alanta was, like uh, uh, Kukere was. Uh, What's the, what's, the, what's the kukuri dance? Or how do you, what's, what's yeah, the, the kukuri, Etigi. Etigi. You know, like every other dance that has been there. Shoki. Remember Yahuze? Who remembers Yahuze? Shoki is just another dance. The Shakiti Bobo, after some time, it's a vibe. It's, it's, it's pop culture, right? Yeah. And after some time, it goes. It's trends. And it's surprising how people, I mean, it's not surprising because really, how do people eat here? You jump on trends. If you become popular, if it's viral enough, you get a lot of shows, you bargain. Don't forget, people are still making money from record sales. How many people are using Apple Music? Spotify isn't even in every yeah, African country except South Africa. So you go to Music Plus where you can make some cool money or you get your shoes. How do you get your shoes? You have to be popular. Your music has to be playing. How does your music play in Nigeria? It has to be trendy. Or you have a lot of money so you can take it to where you know you can plug it to play. Mm. You get what I mean? Yeah. So it's just another trend that will go and people will look for the next trend and they will jump on it. Okay. Um, speaking of trends, one artist that doesn't follow trends is Brian Moore. He recently dropped a music video and he got a lot of people talking about it. What do you think about his video? Let me even first start from the album. Brian Moore's new album, Rousseau, it's a pretty dope album. Yeah. Right? The writing, the instrumentation, and just the general feel of the project. And it's so, and I like Brian Moore so much that you know, I, 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 why I like him so much is that the way he, he themes his albums, there's, there's a deeper meaning, there's a one true meaning for every album. From Merchant Dealers and Slaves, you know, to Tabula Rasa, you know, to Clitoris, even Son of a Carpenter, you know, there's always a message that he's pushing out there. And he also had it on this album. And you know, to talk about the video, that's just creative freedom. Every artist has creative license, or what they call it, Poetic license, yes, poetic license to do what they need to do. Did the video get us talking? Yes. What is the true meaning of the video? What is it trying to pass? Have we tried to get that in? So take away the Twitter, you know, the tweet, take away the memes and think about why he did that video. That is what we should think about. The yeah. essence of the video, the message he has passed, the message in the music, that is what we should really focus on. Right. And come on, a lot of people have been naked in their videos. It's not a new thing. And apart from that, you see half naked people on Instagram maybe this. Everybody. So why are you shocked anyways? Right. Huh? Let's move away from the guys right now. Let's talk about the ladies. What do you think um, the state of um, female artists in Nigeria right now? Do you think it has gotten better over the last two years, last year? I mean, right now you have Simi, right? You have Simi doing really well. Simi is the next door neighbor girl. And that is just amazing because nobody has been able to take that thing. Nobody was able to, to fill in that void for a long time. Before, before Simi, it was Chidima, the girl next door. And before Chidima, it was Mocheda. Yeah. So you can see how spaced, you know, Mocheda was to Chidima's period from Chidima yeah. to Simi. And Simi has it on lock now. And you know what has is better? Because she's putting work. She dropped an EP when she got signed to Extreme Music. About that time, yeah. she dropped a joint EP with Files. Files. She's dropped her album. Oh. Well written, well produced, good music. What Mo Cheddar and Chidima were not able to like carry on after the first boss and album, Simi has been able to do it. And she's in our third third year now. Yeah. Third or fourth year now, you know, really in the in the forefront of things. You also have Tiwa Savage, who did an incredible comeback, dropped that dope ass EP last year, right? Sugar King. Sugar King. And he's riding on it right now. 
you know, she's featured on almost every record. Okay. She's on any money's record. record. She's everywhere. Tiwa is the definition of a Nigerian hustler. Mm. She's everywhere. And, you know, you have to give her credit for the kind of energy she's put into it. So I see Simi, I see Tiwa, I see Nini Ola doing her thing. I wish her album rollout was better. You know, I, I think, you know, just the album was good, but I think the rollout could have been better. In 2018, your rollout, it's key. the execution of your rollout is just as important as the album. Mm. MI, Rendezvous, perfect example. The execution of the rollout has to be as dope as the album itself. And I didn't see that for Niniola. But she's still in the conversation because she's an amazing singer and she's single. an amazing performer. So she's in the midst. Okay. Those are the three people I kind of see in the forefront, you know, and really doing things. Of course, Yemi Aladi, you can't count her out. She's at the top, right, you know, along with, you know, Simi and Tiwa. Yeah. Pan-African, she's there. She's shutting down shows in France. So, and she has been able to, you know, fly the Nigerian flag globally. So you have to give props to Yemi Aladi as well. Yeah. Speaking of MI, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. The state of Nigerian hip hop. It has been a lot of there's been a lot of uh, debate about that. MI dropped obviously dropped the controversial track and it generated a lot of buzz. What do you think about Nigerian rap right now? Where where it is? Man, I mean, you know, um this is I'm very passionate about this. So um I think it can be better. I think first of all, Nigerian hip hop artists should just change their mentality you know i think a lot of nigerian hip-hop artists especially the guys who don't do indigenous rap feel like they are second class citizens they're relegated you know like they're relegated and nobody gives a damn about them the fact is a lot of people don't give a damn about you people in the industry don't give a damn about hip-hop why because they can't sell hip-hop properly which isn't the rappers or the hip-hop artists fault people just can't sell it properly and because hip-hop is not the top genre in the country facts is facts j cole is coming to nigeria very soon and headlining the show with him is whiskey and the video i can't blame the organizers of the show because they kind of looked at their target audience which is mass market and they looked at the hip-hop artists which aren't mass market you guys are niche so nobody should feel salty now should they put some open uh, opening acts as hip-hop artists on it Totally. Yeah. But nobody should get mad because Whiskey and the video is on it. The fact is that we it's show business. Eh? Show biz, show business. You show, you make money off it. That's the idea. So the state of hip hop can be better. First of all, change the mentality. You guys drop your projects, build your fan base. Stop looking at the pop stars fan base. Build your fan base. Understand the people that like your music, identify them, appeal to them. That is what you know, Odd Future did, you know. That is what Tyler, the creator, Future did. Hit. That's what Chance, the rapper, did. Build your core following. And I think that is the problem, you know, a lot of hip-hop artists have had. But you've had, you, we have, we currently have hip-hop artists that are doing really well. And people, SDC, Show Them Camp, have been able to show us that hip-hop can actually do very well. They did their show last year, and Muriel Kolapak, I was there. A lot of people came through. And that's, that's a perfect example to show you that hip-hop can actually sell. They dropped an album earlier, you know, in about 2010 or 11. They have three mixtapes and they have one EP. And that is, that is consistency. That is the drive that they've had. So shout out to Tech and Ghost. Okay. You know, there are these new kids on the block. Maz and Bazzini, they Very dropped an, a, a, an EP. In Spirit, it's one of the best projects I've heard. So people are constantly doing stuff. Why see, you know? So, you know, it can be better, but you have these guys, you know, pushing and doing their thing. Okay. One young man that has a very hot record right now is Bonner Boy. Yeah. Ye is, like, almost everywhere right yeah. now. A few years ago, you did a facts only episode on him, and you spoke very passionately about him. Yeah. And a snippet made it to his second album. Yeah. Now he, has dropped, he dropped his latest body of work. What do you think about Bonner Boy right now? What are your thoughts about him right now? I mean, um, first of all, you know, shout out to him using the facts only episode on, on his album. But man, I haven't still gotten that check. No check, Barna, no. I like your boy, man. I need that check, man. Hmm? Um, yeah, I mean, I had my thoughts on Bonner. I had my thoughts on the album. And the album didn't come out and it wasn't the, the grand album. I'm talking about the second album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. What's the name of the album again? Uh, spaceship. On a spaceship. On a, on a spaceship. Yeah. You know, but I heard this album and it's a pretty good album. But, you know, Bonner's music and his lifestyle are two different things. 
and I was clearly talking about his lifestyle and how his lifestyle might affect the music. And it did. Yeah, it because saw. he did drop an EP, which also tanked. But, you know, I, I, I hope he's fully focused on the music, which shows in this album, Outside, which is a pretty dope album. And, you know, if you can keep giving us good music and focusing on the music, that's all we want to see, you know, at the end of the day. Okay. One of the recent episodes you did was about, uh, are we hyped for a Mohi, Mohish reunion? Yeah. And lo and behold, it seems we might actually get our, our wishes come through. What do you think about the idea of seeing Mohit coming back together? It's going to be amazing. Stage? It's going to be amazing to just see the whole Mohit on stage. It's going to, I'd see. You know how many throwback songs? We're not even talking the CD album. We're going back to 2004. Four. We're talking about Mobolo. We're talking about records, man. We're talking about the second album. Oh, no, no. Run Down, Funk You Up. There's so many songs to perform. We're talking about One Day. Oh, this my prime. God. One Day, prime, prime One Day, 2009. We're talking about that album. We're talking about Dr. Seed, 2010. That album, Turning Point. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's too much. I think my heart will explode. <laughs> I won't be able to take it. Then see where it's going to come on stage. Ricky, Definitely. Corey Day. No, it's going to be a very, very dope union. The Prince. Oh my God. Ah, no, no. Good morning, your high I'm over. No, no, no. Too many records. I, I don't know how many hours it will last, but they need to start early because we're probably going to leave them the next morning. Definitely. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, the more his reunion. Uh, that, those, they, they, see, if you're going to write the history of Nigerian music, they are going to have at least three pages. So many things they've done, you know, they've, 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 they've bookmarked a period, a time period in Nigerian music that is, that is wired to them, that you can't pass without mentioning them. So, so many things to do. Okay, let's speak on facts only right now. What led you to do this, you know, show in the first place? Well, um, I think we were always, I was always having these conversations. I think I just joined Pulse at the time, a few months in. So I was always having conversations with you, having conversations with Josh, you know, everybody, anybody who was, you know, ready to listen, listen. you know, to me, discussing <laughs> music, you know, having conversations with Joey. So we just thought about it. Annie, you know, head of video at the time, was, was like, why don't we just do a show? Because he was really looking for shows to do. I'm like, okay. Then I sent an email and said, all right, guys, this is what we're going to name it. As a matter of fact, Facts Only was meant to be called The Industry. That was the original <laughs> name. So I remember sending that email. Then later on, I was like, no, I think the name of the show be called Facts Only. Why? Because Jay-Z had dropped his uh, uh, Mad Holy Grill album two years earlier. And, you know, on one of the songs, he actually dropped Facts Only. only. Everything real in my raps only. And at the time, he also did the interview with um, Elio Wilson, Wilson, and they named it the Factually yeah. Edition of uh, The Truth. So, I mean, I was just inspired. I'm a big Ho fan. So, I'm like, this is the name of the show, Factually. You know, we got you on board. It wasn't when you was Tunde. So, shout out to who's Tunde. Tunde. It was Tunde we got on board, and Tunde asked the questions, and we kind of rolled out from there. And the feedback was, you know, was negative and positive at the same time. You know, people insulted me, jabbed me, but, you know, I warmed up to people's hearts, and we kind of did it. So, I was good. Do you think people now appreciate industry insiders critiquing what goes on in the industry? Do you think people appreciate that it's now? Way, it's way better than it was, you know, before. It's way better than it was four years ago, you know. Um, this had, I mean, I, you know, I, was, I, I started out as an entertainment reporter, so I was already critiquing people, and I will get, a, like, a lot of bad, you know, or, or bad feedback or, you know, really, really crazy feedback from people saying, how dare you talk about my music like this, or how dare you write about me like that. But I think gradually people got to understand it, that critiquing goes along with art. There's no art without critiquing. And critiquing doesn't mean saying it's bad or good. It's most times just going into the mind of the artist to explain what or how he made whatever he made as regards or in relation to what has been created before and in that time period. So, you know, we just even critiquing different people, talking about their artistry. Some people have taken it as negative feedback. Some people have taken it as positive feedback. But I'm happy to just have these conversations. Okay. You've all spoken a lot about topical issues yeah. in the music industry. Do you think the industry has fared better since the debut of Facts Only? Man, I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say better or bad. I would say it's just what it has been. But I'm, I hope these conversations have touched one or two people to actually change you know, their business model or what they do or how they feel. 
and I've met people who are giving me feedback to say, man, I watched the show, now I understand this, so I'm going to behave better, or I'm going to be better at what I do, I'm going to read my contracts better, I'm going to ask more questions and all that. So those are the people I really appreciate, the people that the show got to and you know, reached out to and they actually changed some of the things they did or optimized better. Okay, final question right now. What do you think is the legacy of Facts Only? Being this is the last episode right now, what do you think the legacy has been? That, you know, in a few years' time, I get to meet other people who said they watched the show and it inspired them to do something, to change something, to be better at something, to help the ecosystem. That's it for me. Last episode, Facts Only. <laughs>